Working lands can be used and protected simultaneously. Good land management policy facilitates both. But when this is out of balance, things can go really badly. California is a living laboratory to explore how society can address these land use issues facing humanity. It's America's most populous state, one of three North American biodiversity hotspots, and among the top 20 globally. Our economy is ranked sixth in the world and relies heavily on natural resources industries. Inventories of California's biodiversity are maintained and advanced by our world-class research institutions, as well as curated natural reserves and off-site natural history collections. Many of these institutions are investigating how to manage these issues in increasingly complex circumstances. Not all protected land is public land. We all understand how public land is protected through national, state, and local parks. Private land can be protected too in ways that are consistent with public values. There's a lot of history on this property with the Table Mountains being formed here by ancient lava flow and the surrounding landscape eroding around them. On top of the tables, we actually have northern basalt flow vernal pools, which have sensitive species such as tadpole shrimp and vernal pool fairy shrimp that have been documented on the property. Of course, a lot of Native American activity, a lot of cultural sites related to that. It was used for historic cattle ranching. And then in the late 1800s, we had a lot of mining activity on the property. The old San Joaquin and Eastern Railroad that went from Fresno up to Huntington Lake runs right through the property. So a lot of resource concerns here to be addressed. Billy, the IRS has four criteria by which a property can qualify for conservation easement. How does the McKenzie Ranch fulfill those four criteria? Well, we have a large education and outreach program, you know, and then we also have a lot of the areas of the ranch that are viewable from public access, such as Aubrey Road, Millerton Lake. Uh, we also have a large high density of wildlife habitat here in species diversity uh, with the riparian area and oak woodland. And then we also have a diverse array of historical sites on the property. We're at the section of property that qualifies as historic value. So tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here. Yeah, this is a significant cultural resource that we have on the McKenzie Preserve. Uh, this is a Native American village site. There's over 100 bedrock mortars in the immediate area here, as well as uh, some other evidence of housing and village site here. So it's definitely something that we want to conserve and make sure stays intact. This site was part of the mining infrastructure that was used from the period of about 1890 to 1900, where the gold mining took place in this property. This is what's called an arraster, and this is where they would extract the quartz ore from the hillside, and it would be placed in this channel that was made out of rock. Then drag stones would be placed on top of that, which would be drug around in a circle by a donkey walking on this track. They would then extract the crushed up ore and sluice that in a sluice box to try to extract the gold. It's pretty special to have this still intact because usually people would come through afterwards and dismantle this to try to find more gold underneath. So it's a pretty special feature of this property and kind of highlights the mining history of the area. So in order for a conservation area to satisfy the IRS requirement for being an open space that's viewable by the public, you have to have a public right of way such as Aubrey Road here that it can be viewed from. And so this is a really nice place for the public to view some of the ecological attributes uh, that are present on the preserve, such as the Table Mountains. Uh, it's a good exposure, you know, for our education and outreach, recreation. So we have a pretty extensive education and outreach program here. We have hikes and classes that happen pretty much year round, especially during the fall and winter. We also have special horseback rides, special events of this nature, where especially the members and general public can come out and see the preserve. The foothills are a real hot spot for biological diversity, especially in the riparian areas. We have the largest number of wildlife species and the highest density of them. And so this is where we focus a lot of our wildlife species monitoring, such as our focal bird species monitoring to evaluate our overall ecosystem health. The riparian area that's viewable from the road here is one of the most important aspects of this preserve. The public can see the biodiversity and see the life that's created by the water moving through this landscape. It's also a very important ecosystem service that's present on this preserve because most of the state's water moves through rangelands before it's used by society. A lot of people not familiar with agriculture think that cattle grazing kind of conflicts with ecosystem preservation, but that's not true, is it? 
Well, the thing about grazing is that it can, you know, depending, it all depends on how it's managed. You know, conservation grazing focuses on ecological objectives rather than financial gain, which those both aren't mutually exclusive. You can do both at the same time. That's one thing we're trying to show, you know, with our management here. The lack of herbivory at this particular site has really caused an overgrowth of thatch and litter that's just dead and oxidizing at this site. These remnant perennial grasses aren't near as healthy as they are outside the fence and that population. And also the hillside here has a much more diverse and dense stand of native and perennial grasses than what is present inside the exclosure. Well, there is a lot of good management among agricultural landowners in California, but what is SFC doing differently that might appeal to landowners who would like to do a little something more? Well, here we're really taking a science-based approach to our land management, and we're also doing uh, experimental things and conducting research. The general idea is we're putting the ecosystem attributes and our goals related to that at the forefront. Hilly, does the Sierra Foothill Conservancy own the cattle that are grazing on the property? We work with a third-party client to provide the cattle for this property, and the reason that we do that is having cattle on a seasonal basis, we get to decide when the cattle come in, how many are brought in, and when they leave. And that really gives us full control over the grazing, as opposed to someone who has cattle year-round that they have to find somewhere to put them. And so we find that that's the best system for this particular property that works for us. So the Mackenzie Ranch is just an exquisite property that is brimming with conservation value. But how do you as a stewardship manager ensure that the public dollars are spent properly to protect all of the conservation values? Well, Mackenzie Preserve, it all comes down to your ecological objectives. You know, we have to put the things that are the most valuable to society as foremost in our objectives. Those ecosystem services are what really drive our whole management approach. That's how we uh, have illustrated you know, our monitoring plan in our, within our management plan. Our adaptive management is all geared around those objectives. And so it's all about setting your priorities, establishing your goals, and moving towards those objectives in an effective manner. Private lands can be thought of as contributing to a conservation portfolio. And in that portfolio, there might be public lands, but still private lands can provide public value. All together, we can figure out a way to provide a more sustainable environment for generations to come.